Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 13th of October 2019 and we're discussing the Fed's announcement on Friday stating that it will start purchasing $60 billion worth of treasury bills each month to ensure ample reserves in the banking system. What does this mean? Let's investigate. Over the past few weeks, we've produced a number of videos on what is commonly termed the repo market, which in very brief terms works in the following way. The lenders of securities in the repo market are often hedge funds and Wall Street broker dealers that have large portfolios but need money to fund their day-to-day -day trading. The cash providers tend to be money market funds or other asset managers that want a place to invest their cash on a short-term basis at little risk. So banks, hedge funds and other major financial players borrow money on a short-term basis to ensure their books are in order. Often these monies are borrowed overnight or one day or for relatively short time periods so as to ensure those businesses and funds do not experience liquidity problems. Now there has been some concern that recently the Fed found it necessary to introduce more than $200 billion into the financial system as the banks and other financial institutions were providing too little liquidity to enable the system to work effectively or at relatively low interest rate levels. The Fed is in a difficult position. On the one hand it recognizes that it needs to lower rates as the economy is facing declining growth and many parts of the European and world economies are entering into recession. But it also knows that it only has a certain number of rate cuts available before it reaches 0% once again. However, it is fighting a head-to-head -head battle with the repo market because if there is insufficient liquidity at current rates, then the rates rise between bank and bank or financial institution and financial institution so as to attract additional funds, these rates rise, thereby, to some extent, negating the Fed funds rate. So when we saw the repo rate rise as much as 10% at one stage, and admittedly this was an extreme moment, it was against a Fed funds rate of around 2.25%. Now we also have the situation whereby the Fed has stated that it does not intend to enter into negative interest rate territory in the future, and there are good economic reasons for this. And they suggested, without using the words QE, or additional measures would be taken. Well, on Friday, they have indicated the start of these additional measures. With effect from the 15th of October, the Fed will purchase $60 billion worth of treasuries per month to ensure ample reserves in the banking system, but emphasize the new program does not mark a change in monetary policy. Fed Chair Jerome Powell stated earlier in the week that this technical program he was announcing on Friday would continue at least until the second quarter of 2020. Now, in addition to this, the Fed also stated that it would inject cash into the overnight lending markets until January, that's the repo market, and not end it in October as originally planned. Stabilizing short-term rates is important for a number of reasons and the Fed has made it clear that it intends to do just that. Now, Ward McCarthy, the chief financial economist for Jefferies in New York, told Reuters, quote, The Fed will do whatever it needs to do to keep funding rates near where they want them. If this proves to be insufficient, they'll simply do more, end quote. Now, the Fed is at pains to state that this expansion of their balance sheet is very different to the expansion witnessed under their formal QE programs. The bond buying under QE were designed to push down longer term interest rates to spur borrowing and investment. The new purchases of short term bills are simply meant to keep money markets operating smoothly, or so they claim in other words, a greater effect on short-term rates. 
and you will no doubt remember we produced a video on the inverted yield curve whereby short-term rates were higher than long-term rates. So there's some justification, and we only use the word some justification in this argument, where you have short-term rates rising higher than long-term rates. Now, they also added, this is, this is the Fed, also added that, quote, the Treasury purchases will therefore have little, if any, meaningful effect on household and business spending decisions and the overall level of economic activity." Unquote. So the Fed argues that it's all about liquidity and not stimulating the economy. The irony is that to some extent it is stimulating the economy because these measures ensure interest rates remain low. And this would please President Trump, though he is calling for ever greater interest rate cuts. Now we saw on Friday the dollar index fall a little, though it is still very strong at 98.3. But this news is positive for markets in one sense, in that it is ensuring rates remain low, short-term rates remain low, but should also prove positive for precious metal prices. Now that said, we have to bear in mind that at least for now, there will be a constant struggle for investors to determine whether there is one last bull leg left in equities or whether they should move resources to the safe haven precious metal asset class. Now, no one can predict precisely the balance between these two. And as we have advocated, with a presidential election just over 12 months away, the Trump administration will do all that he can to boost economic growth, lower interest rates, and ensure a thriving stock market. As after all, to a high degree, Trump's successful re-election depends upon it, and whether it can be achieved or not, only time will tell. The tentative agreement with China on Friday may be the first stage in achieving the economic growth that this administration currently requires. But as we've just said, only time will tell. Thank you for listening. Please do comment, like, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. <laughs>